In 2004, one of the largest natural disasters in recent history swept across the Indian Ocean. Over 230,000 people died or disappeared in the wake of the tsunami. I was never this scared. I'm sure that the waves swelled up to six meters, then came crashing down. Abdul Gayoom's island became uninhabitable. The tsunami forced me to leave. Now 81, he had spent his life on one of the 1,200 islands that make up the nation of the Maldives, located several hundred kilometers south of India. Kandalhudu Island once housed a thriving fishing village of nearly 4,000 people. Now it's a ghost town. With most buildings in ruins and the groundwater contaminated with seawater, no one can live here. The tsunami was a wake-up call, underscoring the fragility of the Maldives. Scientists say it was a grim preview of what could happen to the entire country if global warming continues uncurbed. The archipelago of the Maldives is made up of coral islands. Its sandy beaches, crystal blue lagoons, along with a rich collection of exotic live corals and tropical fish, attract tourists from all over the world. But with an average altitude of just one and a half meters, these islands are in danger of vanishing under the rising waters. And recent years have seen an increase in tropical storms hitting the islands. Waves as high as four and a half meters have inundated half of the Maldives' 200 populated islands. Many Maldivians are fishermen. For the government, protecting these small and vulnerable fishing communities from rising waters is an almost impossible task. We have tried to relocate people to um, bigger um, islands, relatively safe islands, although more, all the islands in the Maldives are low-lying. But uh, this is very difficult because the people have to leave their homes, their traditional burial grounds, and move to a new area. I didn't want to move because that was the island where I was born. But the tsunami left him with no option. When I go to Kandalhudu now, I know that we can't live there anymore. In 2005, the Maldives launched an experiment to relocate Abdul Gayoom and his entire community to an uninhabited island, Duvafuru. Surrounded by a large reef, it's about 10 times the size of Kandalhudu. The government has built up Duvafuru from scratch. Supported by international relief groups, it took three years and cost some $35 million. After living in temporary shelters on other islands, Gayum and his family now have their own house with modern amenities. This is our refrigerator. The rooms are bigger and more spacious. I was thrilled. I was so happy to be reunited with my family, my friends, and people I'm familiar with. But unfortunately, the experiment has not gone according to plan. Duvafuru is as vulnerable to erosion as all the other islands are. Ishmael Ahmed is the chief of Duvafuru Island. During the last southwest monsoon, the waves came here and flooded some houses. Previously, the beach here was up to 12 meters wide. Now the beach is just a meter wide, almost reaching the houses. Experts believe that a strong seawall is needed to stop the erosion. The government is planning to uh, do the sea walls there as well. It's a priority for the government to protect that island because we've put so much already into it. The government has already built a massive seawall made of concrete tetrapods around its capital, Malet. The wall cost 49 million euros, which was donated by the Japanese government. 
It helped protect the city during the 2004 tsunami. But tiny Male is already home to 110,000 people, nearly a third of the country's population. It's one of the world's most densely populated cities. Uh, so we have to now invest much more in population centers uh, outside of Male, but they will require basic infrastructure, and this requires investment. People in the Maldives have lived on these islands for 3,000 years. But their willingness to move to higher-lying islands will be the key to their survival. I prefer Duvafaru. I will not go back. I will stay here. I hope that the disaster that struck Candle Hudu does not happen here. Obviously, we are not uh, packing our suitcases to leave. We have a very long history. We want to stay on these islands and live here as long as we can.